We just can't get enough of Mars, can we? Everyone wants to go there, and astronauts are now looking at caves on the red planet where they can live once people inhabit it. The planet itself has some similar characteristics to Earth. Yeah, it's somewhat smaller than Earth, but the time it takes for the planets to revolve around themselves is also similar, which is about a day. On paper, Mars might seem like a good idea given some similarities to Earth, but there are some factors we need to pay attention to before we consider stepping foot there. The temperature. Mars might look like a scorching hot planet like a freakishly large Sahara desert, but quite the opposite. It's really cold. Mars has a reputation for being a freezing, desolate, endless land that happens to have the largest mountain in our solar system thus far. So, within those mountains, astronauts and scientists are considering whether naturally built caves are the answer to our survival. Caves won't be the worst thing we'd live in considering our ancestors used to dwell in caves in communities. Logically, it's the best place to stay dry during a storm and keep warm. It's the best place for protection against predators like giant birds, elephants, and saber-toothed cats. We even had our first art shows in caves with evidence of cave art dated thousands of years ago. Caves are a good idea, and they can also help us save a lot of money when establishing a colony on Mars. Rather than building a fresh structure in the middle of an open plain, the cave structure will help and influence the architecture, potentially saving lots and lots of money. Going to Mars will be expensive. It's already expensive sending people to the moon and launching a rocket into space. So, we have to consider the logistics. Another thing to look out for is caves in the ground that are not necessarily stuck on mountains. Scientists believe that most potential places for humans to thrive are caves. These spaces are large enough to host large populations. So far, they identified nine caves as large as football fields. So what would life look like if we lived in caves on Mars? For one thing, sunlight would be hard to access. By the time we reach Mars, we would have the best technology to maximize our lifespan in a hostile environment which means withstanding the harsh sun rays of Mars. Most likely, we would dig through the caves further underground where oxygen would be pumped for everyone to breathe. People can walk around casually, thinking they're on Earth, and to exit the caves, you would need to wear a special suit. These cave colonies would have dormitories for people to live in and special spaces for colony meetings, entertainment, grocery markets, schools, and other places that are needed to sustain a colony. There would also be indoor farms to grow crops and raise livestock. A team of experts mapped out what some of the dwellings will look like on Mars. And just like on Earth, we will have apartments for young professionals, family homes, and luxury mansions. Some of the dwelling units would be placed on the surface and not in caves. One of the key elements of the design and architecture is how to build it around the natural light to brighten up the homes. Another element is how to deflect radiation and cosmic rays. Because Mars has such a thin atmosphere, sun rays and other hazardous objects easily enter Mars. The dwelling units also have to be sturdy to protect them from severe dust storms and extreme cold temperatures. Some of the living pods or dwelling units that are for couples or singles would have tunnels leading to a shared workspace and garden. Studies show that even being in the presence of greenery can reduce stress levels significantly. And on the red planet, we would definitely need some greenery. We can expect the family homes to be built within the caves, not necessarily underground. It would be tempting to head outside with the view of Mars, but the large thick glass would prevent anything from coming in and out. Those who are underground with a view rely on LEDs and camera systems to screen the surface landscape of Mars so it acts like real windows. And if you're bored of the surface, you can always switch the channel and watch something else as you please. Maybe a flowing river surrounded by trees. Or maybe a penthouse view of all of New York. The choice is yours. There would be a driveway that leads to a garage so one can enter and exit easily. There won't really be a reason to exit the cave colony except probably to visit other cave colonies. In this case, we would have highly crafted vehicles that will take people from colony to colony on the surface. The vehicles can withstand harsh temperatures and would be constantly transporting people daily. 
Some people might live in a certain colony and have to commute to work every day in other colonies. Humans might not have to be working in dangerous conditions or on the surface. We would have robots that will do that for us. The thing about robots is that they don't need to be human-shaped to do a job. However, before transporting humans to space, we would need to create some human-like robots and land them on Mars. With the exact physical form, we can determine what would happen to people if they were on Mars. We would have robots for specific tasks, helping us with everything. Let's not forget artificial intelligence plays a major role in monitoring the systems and updating the functionalities of the colony. It'll know when certain systems need fixing, adjusting, renewing, and changing. We also need people to keep an eye out for anything out of the ordinary and also to make sure people are behaving and not breaking the law. Getting to Mars would be the earliest obstacle we will face. We've already launched some robots to explore the terrain and conduct some studies. At first, we would send robots to test the conditions and to build most of the infrastructure. To build a proper colony, we would have to send out young couples willing to dedicate their lives to the future and the future of their children. It won't be easy. In fact, there would be a variety of people with different professions and specializations to help establish the colony. People would have to work and establish a local economy. We would need scientists, doctors, farmers, teachers for the children, and engineers to maintain the structure. It will take time for the colony to reach a substantial size, but it's all part of the process. Even the spaceships would need to be large and sufficient to house thousands of people traveling from Earth. Of course, by then, most of the dwelling units would have been built and people would have already picked out their houses depending on if they were single or if they were about to start a family. Once the colony has the necessary professionals it needs, then come the other people who wish to start their life on Mars. People would need entertainment, so musicians would find a place in the colony. We can't expect everyone to go out on a nice sunny day to the beach but perhaps one day, when the colony is large enough, there can be an artificial body of water with the same elements as the beach. Livestock animals would also be shipped from Earth to be raised on Mars, where they can populate for our nourishment. We can also bring most of the animals and establish a wildlife sanctuary for everyone to enjoy and for the animals to thrive. For now, humans are planning on reaching the Red Planet sooner than we think, and who knows? Maybe you can be one of the first people to sign up and have your own little dwelling unit far away from Earth.